Well, thank you all for coming today. Um, let me start by introducing myself. I'm Mac Talley. I'm president of the Bay Area News Group, and uh, it's my distinct honor to have you all uh, join us at our conference today. I'm actually impressed that we had so many members from the media come out today with all the news and uh, things that are happening in this very community right now, so I'm appreciative of that and we'll be respectful of your time. Um, I'm going to introduce one person right now uh, who's with us, is Steve Rossi. He's the CEO of uh, the California Newspaper Partnership. The Bay Area News Group is part of that, so we'll both be available for questions, and I'm going to introduce a couple of other people in just a second. But we do have some exciting news, at least we're excited about it, and I think our readers um, and your viewers will be excited about it as well, in that um, we have... Uh, found a way to uh, keep the Oakland Tribune and the name of this newspaper and most of the mastheads that we have um, in our Bay Area News Group um, operation. So we got a lot of feedback as a result of our previous announcements, and it's centered around the fact people wanted to keep their local papers, and based on their feedback, we decided to get a plan that would keep those mastheads, but more importantly, build on the brand of those mastheads on a digital strategy so we would have a truly a multimedia uh, approach to that work. So I think the conclusion of all that is instead of pulling up into a more regional um, strategy, we're going to actually push deeper into the communities that we serve and our approach will be a multimedia strategy to deliver the content in the manner that our readers really want to receive it. So. That's the masthead piece. We're really excited about that. I think, you know, based on the feedback we have, we think people will be excited about that as well. In addition to keeping the mastheads, we're going to enhance the content around the current masthead branded web pages with more robust news, local news, and user generated content that's really pertinent to their local communities. We're going to couple that with local high utility information such as searchable business directories event listings, daily deals, mapped crime reports, and public employee salary databases where available and resource lists to provide a much more robust experience online to complement the local print media. Uh, we're going to enhance that with WAP pages around or the uh, individual mastheads themselves for people who want to receive their information on mobile. That's one of the areas that's uh, growing the fastest for us. Uh, and for those that prefer an app experience, we're going to try to push those out in an app world as well. Uh, we'll expand our uh, network of community bloggers uh, to give greater in sources of information to the uh, portals that we have. So those are the mastheads and those are the uh, web pages, which are our, our digital approach for truly a multimedia uh, solution. And of equal, if not greater, importance is that we're announcing the opening of two community media labs here in Oakland, centered on the theme, listen, engage, learn, and share. These community labs will feature Wi-Fi, space for community meetings, blogging stations, Wi-Fi access, as well as classes taught by the public or even our own news staff. Mark Reynolds, who's the editor of the Oakland Tribune, has been named Senior Editor for Community Engagement for the Bay Area News Group and will oversee these community labs. And I'd like to ask Martin to come up now and share his vision for this initiative and introduce a very special guest with us today for this announcement. Martin? Thank you, Mike. <coughs> Good afternoon. Uh, again, my name is Martin Reynolds, editor of the Oakland Tribune. And today is a very good day for Oakland at a time when so much uh, about the news business has centered around its demise. Uh, we're in a, a phase now in the organization's uh, operation where we're looking at building something uh, and reigniting uh, Oakland as a, as a centerpiece to this effort. Uh, this initiative <clears throat> around listen, engage, learn, and share piggybacks off the work that we began with the Oakland Voices Project where we partnered with the Maynard Institute for Journalism Education. And this project, we trained West Oakland residents to become the storytellers on behalf of the community. And it was a very powerful opportunity for people from the community to begin to help and participate in shaping the narrative of their community. Now, this next phase will include an open newsroom concept, which was originated in Torrington, Connecticut, under a registered citizen uh, newspaper, where they, uh, in their new facility, uh, when they moved into it, 
they tore down the walls and began to uh, live stream their news meetings. They began to open up uh, with a uh, Wi-Fi in the center of the newsroom, which was complete with workstations where their network bloggers could come. Uh, they even began to look at open and live streaming their editorial boards. In addition to that, uh, they focused on en enabling the community to have direct access to the people who shape the narrative of their community every day, the reporters and the editors. Now, the question will become, how do we implement a open newsroom in a community like Oakland versus that of Torrington, which is a mill town, a former mill town in, in, um, in, uh, uh, that is in Connecticut uh, that's only comprised of about 36,000 people versus Oakland, which is a major urban center. And obviously, <clears throat> to do that, we'll be creating a steering committee and talking to journalists in the newsrooms, uh, particularly at the Tribune, about, well, how do we take this philosophy of an open newsroom and then implement it <clears throat> in the city of Oakland? In addition to that, uh, and, and that's going to be a, a very exciting conversation to have, and we'll pro probably include others outside the community to help inform that process. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Once we complete, uh, and that'll happen um, once the Tribune office is moved downtown. Another part of this very exciting is that the Tribune will return, will be returning to downtown Oakland. Uh, we haven't yet identified the exact location of where that will be yet, but that's another exciting piece of this announcement that uh, the Tribune going back downtown. Uh, in addition to that, once the initial uh, community newsroom is established downtown, this concept will be spread out to other news uh, rooms in the Bay Area News Group footprint. And so I'm very excited to know that while it will center in Oakland, it's going to be a part of what we do as the Bay Area News Group going forward. Now, to help inform this process, I'm very excited to once again be partnering with the Maynard Institute for Journalism Education. As I mentioned, they were uh, a cornerstone uh, partner with us on the Oakland Voices Project, and once again, we'll be looking to uh, utilize uh, their expertise, Dory Maynard and the Maynard family, as many know, Bob Maynard owned the Oakland Tribune at a time when many in the community uh, felt that that newspaper really reflected uh, their lives. And it's exciting and adds tremendous credibility and expertise to this campaign by having the Institute and the incredible training uh, resources and expertise that they have. So with that, I want to ask Dory Maynard to come up to say a few words about the significance of the paper retaining its name and, and whatever else she wants to say. Whatever else I want to say. <laughs> whatever else she wants to say. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Martin. Mm -hmm. I have to say that both um, personally and professionally, this is a very exciting day for us today. Personally, my father loved the Oakland Tribune. Uh, as some of you may recall, when he got here in 1979, the paper was so mediocre, it was deemed the second worst newspaper in the country. In fact, it was so mediocre, it didn't even rank, it wasn't even worthy of being ranked the first worst newspaper in the country. But my dad poured his heart, his soul, and his intellect into the Oakland Tribune, and when, by the time he stepped away, the paper had regained its national reputation and won scores of of awards, including the Pulitzer Prize. Before he died, he sold the paper because he wanted to make sure that Oakland did not become a city, the only city to lose its hometown newspaper. And so today, to hear that, the, in fact, the Tribune will survive means so much to me and my brothers. It's just really quite meaningful. You know, my dad used to say that a newspaper needs to be a tool of community engagement. So to also hear that the Tribune is going to go back to, to um, downtown and to open up its doors to the citizens of the community it serves is something I think would make my father enormously proud. And then professionally, this is a great day because as some of you may know, the Maynard Institute, our goal is to help the nation's news media more accurately, more fairly, and more credibly cover all segments of our community. So to be invited to partner with the, with the Tribune as it goes through this innovative phrase really is very exciting and builds on our history of partnerships 
which not only include Oakland Voices, but the Chauncey Bailey Project. So I just want to say on behalf of my brothers David and Alex and my colleagues, Elizabeth Pinio and Evelyn Sue, we are really excited to be part of this day. So thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Dory. I think you so eloquently conveyed exactly the message that we're trying to share today of trying to get deeper in the communities, maintain the, the brands that we have that are so meaningful in these communities, and actually try to engage and involve the readers and our audience um, in the uh, in the process, uh, which we think that is really key to our future, and uh, be a more social and participatory uh, participatory media. So, this first full scale lab will open in Oakland in early uh, 2012. But we do plan to replicate these labs in several other the news gathering operations throughout the Bay Area. And so I think, as you can see, what we're trying to do here is instead of what our original plan was to try to pull up into a more regional strategy in the Bay Area, we're actually trying to go the opposite way and push down deeper into the communities that we serve to uh, be more local and relevant with our content. So as part of these changes uh, for the Oakland Tribune and for the Fremont Argus and the Hayward Daily Review, we do plan to cease the home delivered portion of the subscriptions for Monday and Monday only. These newspapers will still be available for single copy purchase on Monday and an exact replica of the newspaper will be delivered to them electronically is what we call our e-edition but it's an exact replica of the same thing you would see in print but it's online that will be available to all the subscribers Monday and every day of the week. In markets where advertising revenue is very low on Mondays and where circulation revenue is below average, we are testing the concept of eliminating Monday. Unfortunately, newspapers are dependent on both forms of revenue, and when advertisers signal that Monday is not as important to them as other days of the week, and when subscribers vote with their pocketbooks that they're adverse to higher subscription prices, that's a challenge for us. We actually started out this year testing the concept in some of our Northern California newspapers in markets such as Ukiah and Woodland and received very little subscriber pushback, so we're expanding that concept into these three bang newspapers. The changes allow for the efficiencies that help enable bang to provide additional value to our readers. Improvements for more ways for the community members to access news and information on their digital devices or desktops. We're expanding the number of community portals and city pages that we have on the web. We're adding new features to deliver new and more, more local news content and information, including blogs, event listings, business directories, deals, whatever that might be. The print improvements, which will also coincide, which uh, uh, begins with our November launch, include adding a separate local news section to our East Bay papers. That's the, Walnut, that's the Oakland Tribune, the Contra Costa papers, the Fremont. We'll now have a standalone local section for, again, for us to more prominently feature the local news content. We'll gain a separate business section, and the lineup of comics will also change but as a result of the reader poll and be more in tune with what they are interested in. We appreciated all the feedback that we received from our previous announcement. Uh, as you can see that we really took that feedback to heart and helped us guide us the plan that we think not only preserves our local identity in these communities but enhances it and we believe is our path to the future. All these changes are still on track to go the uh, first part of November, the first two weeks of November. So with that, uh, I'd like to open it up for questions. Which means the planned layoffs coming at Bay Area newspaper number seven. Okay. So um, we did announce last time that we are going to have some uh, reductions in, in people, and we have tried to keep the impact of that action to a minimum with reporters or other local content generating people, so as not to detract from the value that our readers uh, will receive. We are still closing the Walnut Creek printing facility. But much of the reduction in people is a result of that. Actually moving that work from the Walnut Creek 
down to our South Bay printing facility actually gives us the capability of adding these uh, enhancements to the printed products, such as the separate new local news section. They couldn't do that because of the capacity on the, on the uh, Walnut Creek place, uh, presses. This gives us more capacity for color and more content, and we did budget for more content to go in these papers. What about the newsroom layoffs? Uh, we've tried to minimize the newsroom layoffs as much as possible, and Dave yes. could probably speak directly. Dave is the editor-in-chief and can speak directly uh, to that issue. Uh, we're, we've been able uh, to reduce the number of newsroom cuts from uh, the 40 to 48 range to approximately 25 uh, people who will be laid off. Uh, as we said uh, to start with, uh, we would be looking at various ways to cut freelance and other areas. We've also had some volunteers, and we've been given some relief on the total number that we had. So right at the moment, it's about... Of 25. We have some other people who are talking about possibly retiring uh, and taking the severance offer. So it's a little uh, Is that across all the bank papers or just across? That's across all of the bank oh, papers. Okay. Yeah. Your strategy that you mentioned of pulling back from the regional approach yes. and going, drilling down locally, um, how's that going to apply if at all to what you do with the Um, well, Contra, all the papers will keep their current mastheads. So the West County Times will be the West County Times, Contra Costa will be Contra Costa, East County will be East County, San Ramon. Uh, the only exception to that is in the Valley area where we had the Tri-Valley Herald and the Valley Times, two overlapping papers serving the same marketplace. So we are going to rebrand those papers under one single mast of the Tri-Valley Times. The mastheads themselves will still be there printed underneath the new masthead, but uh, we tried to untangle those two papers to serve that one marketplace. I to follow up in your remarks about looking forward to <coughs> going back to downtown Oakland. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? And also, since you're, I guess your roots were the Tribune, sure. the, uh, that two part, that and uh, retaining the Tribune masthead. Sure. Well, obviously, being able to return to downtown Oakland is something that uh, we're all very excited about. Uh, the staff, I could accurately say never wanted to leave downtown. We always felt that we were disconnected. Uh, we like to keep an eye on things, uh, whether it's City Hall or whether what's going on at 14th and Broadway, uh, and not to mention the fact just the logistics for reporters and photographers to get out. Yeah, exactly, to occupy Oakland. It's, it's so much better when you have a more centralized location. So, uh, and I also think that the community took it took exception to us even though we're still in Oakland and we're still here right by the Coliseum right across from where the Raiders and the A's play and the Warriors I think people still felt that when we left downtown we were somehow abandoning the city and even though obviously that's not true uh, I think that was the perception and so the fact that we can uh, return to uh, where I think we want to be and where the community I think envisions that we ought to be I think that's a very exciting prospect especially when you couple that with this new community engagement strategy, open newsroom, and media labs. Uh, I think it's just going to be a very dynamic and interesting time. Uh, one of the things that makes me so very excited about this project is the fact that we get to engage with the community in a way uh, that we hadn't before and that the company has decided, you know, this is a priority. This is how we need to approach journalism going forward. It can't just be a one-way conversation. It needs to be something where we include the community in an opportunity uh, to uh, discuss and help shape the narrative of its community while still producing professional journalism that we do. And, and keeping the master, keeping the tribute. Well, and keeping the, I mean, obviously when, the, when it was announced that we would become the East Bay Tribune, um, all of us in the room were, were certainly saddened by that. We were going to continue and soldier on, of course, and cover the communities that we that rely on us. But to know that the Oakland Tribune masthead will be retained, will live on, I think is important. It's a paper that's been around for 137 years. It has national recognition, uh, an incredible legacy. Incredible journalists have come through here and covered this vibrant community for a very long time. And the, the city deserves a newspaper that bears its name. Going to be a reduction in staff that's actually dedicated in Oakland to covering the city that the Hope Citizen journalists will uh, take up? 
or is the staff expected to remain stable that eight or nine, whatever mm. it is, that are actually My, I, Our hope is that that impact will be minimal. Um, I, I can't say exactly the, what the full impact will be as of yet, but I, we're very hopeful that the impact will be minimal, um, that we'll have professional journalists there, and then we will have these community correspondents and other initiatives in place to help fill in uh, the gaps that may exist. But I'm, I'm very hopeful that uh, that impact will be minimal, and because I, I think that there are two different things. I think journalists are produce a very different kind of of work than community correspondents, and those voices are different. Two more questions. Mm -hmm. Will the community correspondents be paid? Uh, be well, it depends. For our Oakland Voices project, which we are seeking another round of funding for, those correspondents would be paid as part of that program. Uh, this other dynamic that we create where we uh, open up the conversation to a community blogger environment where there's a mutual uh, um, benefit where we link to them, they link to us so that we're they're able to gain audience through our exposure and vice versa, that wouldn't necessarily be the case. So is it your intention that you would partner with organizations like Oakland Local that already have blogging networks or you seek to only work with new uh, entities? Absolutely we'll be partnering with entities like Oakland Local uh, and others. Uh, I think the door is open. Uh, this The idea here is to engage, not to um, cut ourselves off or decide who we ought to engage with, who we ought to talk with, not at all. Where are these community media centers going to be? Well, we, have an, we have one currently now that we opened up uh, that's been dormant for a while that we utilized for the initial iteration of Oakland Voices. Mm -hmm. uh, so that one we're going to sort of start rolling uh, towards the first of the month. And that's downtown? Uh, that's at the West Oakland branch okay. of the Oakland Public Library. Okay. And so we'll sort of kind of get things going there, just sort of being there, engaging with the community, maybe perhaps rolling out some classes. But the main lab will open up when we move to the new downtown offices, which that site has not yet been chosen, but we have options. Nothing needs to open up. Uh, well, Oakland Voices, uh, if we indeed get the next round of funding, the next iteration of Oakland Voices would be f centered in East Oakland. Okay. Is the Old Tribune building uh, among the options? Unfortunately, no. It's in foreclosure. Uh, it was certainly looked at. Um, many in the staff, <laughs> many of the staff, would love to go back to the tower. They love the tower. We all love the tower. How can you not love the tower, right? <laughs> I mean, the tower is the tower, right? So uh, we would love to have had that be an option, but it's not now due to uh, the situation with the building. And maybe you mentioned. Uh, early 2012. Yeah, but yeah. Any other questions? Uh, just to follow up on sure. the concept, uh, I believe the term you used was uh, was it open newsroom yes. or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being I'm more of an old school reporter. <laughs> but what? What? what uh, to, to yeah. that well, you know, the concept is, I mean, the concept versus how it's going to work. I think are two different things. But the concept is really around having a facility where the community can, is welcomed to come and participate. For instance, we will have uh, workstations where our new network of bloggers uh, could come and work. There would be a facility uh, where meetings could be held, uh, classes could be offered, whether they're taught by us or taught by other people in the community. Let's say, for instance, uh, Susan Murray wants to do a, a a, a class on how to blog or V Smooth wants to do something about covering uh, who does the Better Oakland blog wants to do a, a seminar on how to best cover your city council in your own blog. We would facilitate that. Uh, and the idea would be to provide a space, a place of convergence uh, where the community can come. Now, to answer your question, old school, how is that actually going to work? Obviously there are issues of security, uh, certainly um, we, none of us need to be reminded of the Chauncey Bailey situation, um, but the reality is I think the way we're going to address that is sort of have a conversation amongst those in the room, journalists, some people from the community I think that we want to partner with to best decide and determine well, how do we achieve the goals of an open newsroom while understanding the realities of having it be in an urban center. That's a good question. I don't know. I'm glad I'm not writing the check. Mac is so. <laughs>
Well, there's going to be some costs associated with that, but quite frankly, I think it's it's necessary for us to get back into. Uh, we'll come over here. Yeah. But to answer your question, there will be some costs associated with that. But in terms of us re-engaging in the community and, and uh, trying to invite them in, this is not a facility that really is conducive to that. You really have to come make this a destination, whereas uh, downtown will be, we think, much more inviting to get the people to participate. You can see why we... Why um, Martin was chosen to lead this effort is uh, his enthusiasm for the project kind of exuberates, and we're excited to have him champion this cause for us. Oh, yes. I hate to ask another question about contra Costa times. Sure. No, absolutely. But, uh, has a decision been made yet as to uh, where those news personnel are going to be moved, uh, sheltered, headquartered, out of uh, Shadelands? We are still looking for a facility in Walnut Creek right now, um, and uh, the, the city has actually expressed some interest in the facility that we have now. So, so have you um, eliminated Concord? As no, we, we haven't eliminated Concord at this point. Um, it will certainly be an East Bay facility, uh, but um, I'd say right now um, you know, we, we should be able to make that decision here pretty quickly, but it's not been made yet. Yes? Production personnel, um, there were some opportunities for production personnel to move to the Concord plant because we have a new uh, plant, a new, pr a new press that's actually going into that plant, and so um, some of them are moving up to that location. There were also some positions in the Arden facility, and uh, some of them went that way, but uh, some of them were, uh, will be separated. You know, it's a moving target because of, you know, we try to use open positions and the same thing that Dave talked about earlier to try to minimize the, uh, the number. But, you know, the, in terms of non-local content generating people, the number is, is roughly the same as what we announced earlier. Yes? And just to tidy up one bit that I didn't notice in the press release. Oh, okay. But uh, I'm assuming the San Jose Mercury News will stay unchanged. No, that's right. Um, everything stays. The mastheads stay the same, with the exception of the valley area, and there's a minor change in Alameda. There's about 2,500 papers underneath the name of the Alameda Times Star. That will actually become the Oakland Tribune. It'll still keep the Alameda name, but it'll be underneath the Oakland Tribune name. Everything else stays identical to what it is today. In terms of your websites, so yes. like now I check your, I, I go to insidebayarea.com. So would that is that going to be discontinued and you have like specific ones like the Tribune and the others? Yeah, those, uh, the Oakland Tribune and the individual papers themselves will nest underneath the core bang sites, which are insidebayarea.com, contacosta.com, and uh, mercurynews.com because that's important for us so that people can find it obviously in numerous ways but it also protects our search engine optimization we get a great deal of traffic coming in for those sites and we don't want to diminish that this should only add to it that's right that's right so you should be able to continue to dive down deeper uh, even underneath the Oakland Tribune, there's a button called My Towns, which gives you a whole list of actual towns underneath that are served by it that you can get deeper into the local content. And so, again, the strategy is have the print and the digital work together to support each other. And I think the events this week are really uh, demonstrative of what we're trying to do here because you know, the Oakland uh, activities around uh, Occupy Oakland uh, really happened about 3 o'clock in the morning, which is obviously not a great cycle for the printed version. But we were able, Martin and his team were able to capture all of that on the website with up-to-date uh, news and information coupled with, you know, hunt, lots and lots of photos experience. So if you were like me, you went to the website, you got the latest news and information, you got a lot of uh, pictorial a view of what was happening, and then the printed version of the paper complements that with a little bit more in-depth look and a little a different tact in the coverage. So the two, this is really think a perfect example of what we're trying to do here, get the two media to work together and support each other. Yes? 
Um, now, you mentioned that community feedback contributed to this mm -hmm. decision. Mm -hmm. What about the Digital First takeover of management of media news group papers? Uh, did John Payton or others there have anything to say about your planned regionalization strategy? You know, John Payton is very focused on local news content, mm -hmm. and he did ask us to take a look at this program. Uh, the previous administration was more about regional. He's more about being local with community, quite frankly. That was music to our ears, and uh, we believe in that, the strength of these brands as well. And so there was no mandate from John Payton, but he definitely asked us to take a look at the plan. I think we have a much better plan today than we had uh, six to eight weeks ago. It's been holding back a lot of uh, media news group properties in terms of doing creative things online has been the rather difficult content management system they've had that's been very centralized. Are there any plans to overhaul that, that system or uh, spring up ancillary systems to do some of the things you were talking about? Yeah, the content management system is, has been a challenge for us, and yeah, that is definitely on the fore, front burner to try to fix that and replace it with a system that can offer us more opportunities, and that's being worked on as we speak. Well, I very much appreciate all of you coming today. I uh, hopefully we were able to answer your questions, and it was worth your visit. Very much appreciate it. Thank you.